Hello and thank you for joining us. Yes, it is a great day to be alive and I'm excited. I'm excited about your life because the best is yet to come. I do believe that you're tuning into this program because God wants to ignite and stir up the passion, the dreams, the vision that you've gone to sleep on. Today is your day of liberty. My guest on today, author Patricia Dorsey, is going to give you her life journey of how she turned just faith into what God showed her to do. If you're ready, I'm definitely ready. Let's sit down and let's talk. to sit down one-on-one -on -one and talk and hear what the spirit has to say but I want to encourage you to follow your dreams and aspirations but more importantly get a vision for your life how do you do that by simply creating a vision board your likes your passions and the things that you aspire to do my guest on today we're gonna sit back one-on-one -on -one, and I call her a woman-to-woman -woman diva one who's determined intelligent victorious and yet anointed because she's doing what God has called her to do good morning Miss Patricia good morning, good morning. God bless Great you how are you, you. Thank or you should I say welcome back? Yes. God has been increasing and enlarging your territory since Absolutely. you've been here. And I think that's been about three years ago. So it's we say welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. I'm holding all of these <laughs> accolades from magazines, uh, just proclamations, newspaper articles. God has really done a great work. Share with us just since then what has happened and what he's doing now. So much has happened since I was here the last time. Um, I was um, proclaimed as a goodwill ambassador for Tupelo. Amen. And, and Congratulations. For, Mrs. for Mississippi by the governor of the state uh, to proclaim my message of celebrating the South and promoting a positive Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so excited about that. I was able to go down to the state capitol and read some of my poems mm -hmm. and before the legislature and uh, they gave me a resolution yes. proclaiming and I some think of I'm holding yes, that in my mind. It's yes. just wonderful to see because <laughs> one of the things that I love so much about you you are quite positive. Um, social media is blowing up, Facebook, <laughs> because many times when we think about Mississippi, we're proud that we're Mississippian, but the outside world, you know, for some reason they think that we're just a bunch of country bumpkins that just sit around on the porch, you know, eating watermelon and chicken, wear around barefooted. I don't know what it is, Absolutely. but through your um, book, Reflections of a Mississippi Magnolia, you have given us just this illumination that we are proud to be Mississippians. That's what I try to do. Where does all this positive energy come from? My love of Mississippi, my love of the people of Mississippi, and wanting to let people know that there is so much more than all of the negatives that are usually portrayed in the media. Yeah. It's just not a popular thing to say anything positive about Mississippi, mm -hmm. and there is so much more than all of those negatives. Yeah. And I want people to know that, and I want uh, the people of Mississippi, especially our youth, to be proud of who they are and proud of where they come from and yeah. proud of this great state that yeah. we live in. Now, you grew up in Tupelo yes, area. Yes, absolutely. But at some point, you relocated and then you came back. Tell yes. us why. Well, I went to school uh, in Boston University in Boston, Massachusetts, and half of my friends called me Tupelo and the other half called me Mississippi <laughs> because every time they saw me coming, guess what we're going to talk about? Okay, what you got wrong about Mississippi? Mississippi. I said, okay, yes, we do have shoes. We might not wear them all the time, but we do have <laughs> shoes. So I tell people, that's really when I started. I've always considered myself a goodwill ambassador for mm -hmm. Mississippi because it, it's just been in my heart. There's so many good things about Mississippi. And like I said, nobody wants to say those things. Yeah. I came home for a couple of years, and then I moved to Memphis, Tennessee, working mm -hmm. in the mental health field. I uh, stayed there a while, I uh, had a son, and mm -hmm. I was thinking, okay, we need to come back to a slower pace of life. because Mississippi! We know <laughs> I want him to get the kind of upbringing that I had and yeah. the kind of things that, that I knew here. So we moved back here and just kind of, I, I can't say a fluke, it was God. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. right after I moved back in August, 
In December, a friend of mine who I'd known when I was in high school, he's older, but he was doing a book signing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went down to the book signing at Reed's and I told him that I had been writing some poems. Yeah. And uh, after it was over, we talked about it and he was like, you need to do something with these poems. And that's how it all came about. God just set you up. You he had did. to come back home in order to receive the Absolutely. blessing. Absolutely. You know, and, and there's so many times where God would tell you to do something, you, I'm sure you was like, oh, I don't right. know if I need to do that. <laughs> you kind of wavered in your faith. Right. But when he tells you to do something you know I love when they were at the wedding Jesus said uh, Mary said whatever Jesus tells you to do do Absolutely. it and and you turn the water into wine and that's exactly what has happened in your life that you're seeing the fruit of your labor Absolutely. and not only that um, we you're you know being proclaimed as Mississippi Goodwill ambassador mm -hmm. but there's some other great things that are going on as well <laughs> don't just keep it all to yourself we want to know and I, and I say that because sometimes women we're hesitant. You know, we mm -hmm. overthink, we rationalize, and we have a word from God, and then that three-letter words come in, but yes. how am I going to do this? How am I going to pay for this? Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I want I want you to overflow so those that are watching can hear the blessings that God is, is, has really bestowed upon you. It is. It really is an overflow. Mm -hmm. um, I have been contacted by schools in Illinois, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, just all kinds of places who are using my poems in textbooks, mm -hmm. a textbook in Germany is using my poem. Isn't that amazing? It is. There is a talk show in the works that Amen. someone from California contacted me and said that I love your poems and I love the way that you proclaim Mississippi and the Southern way and of And you've never met this individual. Never. This was just by social, social media. media. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> you know, is. God knows how to get you where he wants you to be. When I received, absolutely, when I received the email, I was like, how in the world did she just pick me out and think about me as a talk show host, mm -hmm. you know? So we're going to be taping our first episode <laughs> September the 25th Praise in God. Jackson. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to roll with it because yeah. that's really what I have done with this whole journey. Yeah. Well, the remarkable thing is because we talked about this, um, you stated that you probably would have said no this is my brother's life. He's the more <laughs> outgoing one. You know, he's the more talkative one. You were more reserved. And so when all of this came about, you were just like, no, that's not me. Share right. how you were growing up shy. How were oh, you? Oh, my goodness. I don't know. I, I think I was very shy as a young child. But as far as public speaking is concerned, that was a complete no, no. Oh, I hated getting up in front of talking in front of anyone. Yeah. I was just ter terrified and petrified. Um, but I know that there's a message that I have and mm -hmm. now it just fuels me and I have no fear of talking in front of anybody and everybody because I want to let them know. How did you overcome that fear? What, what do you tell yourself every time you get it? Because you do travel um, and you do a lot of, uh, you know, just presentations, mm -hmm. book signings from Mississippi across the board, you know, from state to state. Right. What do you tell yourself? When I don't even to have to in? think about it anymore because it's about the message. Yeah. I know that I have something really important to talk about and something that I can tell people and encourage people mm -hmm. about not being ashamed of Mississippi and being proud of Mississippi because there is so much there that, that they should be proud of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you most proud of? I am... The simple things, you know what I'm saying? It's not It's not always just a pride, it's just a love. Yeah. It's a love of this place. And William Faulkner says, love is not always because of, sometimes it's in spite of, mm -hmm. you know? And I just love the place, I love the people, I love the type of upbringing that I received in Mississippi and the kind of bonds and the beautiful scenery. And mm -hmm. I write that in my poem, mm -hmm. just the simple things of the green grass and, the, and you don't get that everywhere. When yeah. you're in the big city, it kind of takes you aback that, oh my goodness, I don't see trees, I don't yeah. see the flowers and the birds, and you forget about those mm -hmm. things that you miss, you know. The busyness of, of the world, but when you come to Mississippi, you begin to feel the peace, Absolutely. the tranquility, and you can hear the birds singing, even mm -hmm. on a bad day. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that I love, if I can remember correctly, mm -hmm. inside of your book, there's a poem, and I remember something about the porch and the sweet tea. Am <laughs> yes, I correct? Absolutely. I Southern did it, life. I did it, yes. <laughs> and that is like my my signature poem, I call it Southern Life because it just sums up what I love about this. It, it, it tells you just the slow wow. pace and 
the, the simple things of life. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. What has been most challenging for you coming back home to Mississippi after graduating you know, from Boston University, um, living in Memphis and coming back home with your son? What has been the most challenging? Because a lot of times when you leave, relocate and come back, your mindset is different. Mm -hmm. um, your vision is different. You see things a lot differently from the people that you grew up with, you went mm -hmm. to high school with. So what has been one of the most challenging times for you? I think it, it, it hasn't been challenging in a bad way, but I was telling my husband before we came, I said, when we get back here, I want you to know that everybody knows is going to know you because I am Dr. Neely's daughter, mm -hmm. and that's what they're going to call you, Dr. Neely's <laughs> son-in-law. And the challenging thing for me was I wanted to be anonymous, kind of. Wow. When I'm in Memphis, yeah. when I was in Memphis or in a bigger city, you can go anywhere and everywhere looking like yeah. I, who did and what for. <laughs> but no then, one knows you. <laughs> no, you could just go in and out, go to the <laughs> store and all that kind of stuff. Now, I tell my husband, you know, he does all the shopping. Yeah. I, tell, <laughs> I tell him, I can't, I know, I'll avoid Walmart like, like the plague <laughs> because yes. you're going to see a, a zillion people not knowing me just for the poems or things like that. It's just oh people my, that you, you just think I ideally like <laughs> I do but you know that's the best thing about Mississippi the southern southern hospitality it, it if they see you they want to hug you they want to greet you how's your brother how's yes. your mother how's your dad yes. you know you're gonna spend an hour yeah. talking to everyone that you see yeah so Walmart <laughs> is one of those times where I just run away right. from. yes it's not one of my favorite places to shop because right. even when I'm trying to be incognito with a hat it, on everybody no knows way. Patricia Everybody knows Tammy, Absolutely. So, but that's the joy of it. Even on a bad it day, is. someone speaks life into you, it and is. it's like, oh, that's just what I needed. And that was wow. that's a challenge. And I don't, like I say, it's not such a bad thing, but yeah. it was a challenge. That oh my goodness, every time you go out, it's gonna be hey. wow, <laughs> wow, God, wow. We're gonna come back after this quick commercial break, and we're going to just celebrate the woman of God here, who's just putting positive images and reflections of our state, Mississippi, the Magnolia State. And we're going to talk about how you too can make your dreams become a reality. It's your time and it's your season. More importantly, it's your turn. God wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ever ask or think. All you have to do is just simply trust him and walk in faith. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you would like to purchase a copy of Tammy's new book, Woman 2, Woman, will the real you please stand up? Visit Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or BookstandPublishing.com. You'll be truly blessed as Tammy shares principles of learning to love yourself. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. I am strong when I am on your shore. the sower, Michael Guido of Meta, Georgia, with a seed for the garden of your heart. One morning, the preacher asked the little boy, who made you, Jimmy? He answered, God made part of me. What do you mean? He asked, God made me real little, and I grow the rest myself, he said. All at once, we see God creating the universe in a display of power, culminating with a man and woman like himself. Before long, sin entered the world, bathed in innocence. Creation was shattered by the fall, but there's hope. No matter how dark the situation, God has a plan. God loves you, and he wants to save you. Won't you let him? A seed from the sower has originated from the studios of the Guido Evangelistic Association. You're watching the Christian Television Network, proclaiming the most powerful name of all. 
We're back. And all I can say is, wow, God, wow. When you trust God, believe me, God will do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. That's the scripture for today. Ephesians 3:20. And Patricia Dorsey's life has just been an open window for God to just take you from level to level. I'm holding this textbook right here. And this is actually your poem in a German textbook. And I have to ask this question. Do you even speak German? <laughs> Not at all. Of course. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> that has to be God, you know, to take uh, a Mississippi girl, if I could say it that way and to connect with someone in Germany where they actually have your poem in here and, and they're teaching students. What are they basically teaching students in regards with your poem? It is a class that's teaching English as a foreign language for German high school students. Wow. And my poem is included in their textbook. Oh my. <laughs> so. I'm just excited. You know, when you follow the path that God leads you on, he opens the doors. He really would would does. you agree? Is that your life testimony? Absolutely. I couldn't have planned any of this. I couldn't have foreseen any of these kind of things because I had no intentions of writing poetry. I had no intentions of <laughs> writing a book. I had no intentions of publishing a book, had no intentions of doing any public speaking. Oh None of that was anything in my dreams or hopes. A lot of people who like to write or like or want to publish a book, they've had that in their hearts mm -hmm. since they were children, mm -hmm. you know, and None of that was, I loved poetry because my father used to, to recite poetry to me when I was yeah. a child. So it was just a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. But as far as writing it um, or publishing it, yeah. that was nothing, that was a dream. This is all, some, it's just been unfolding and it definitely has been God. Wow, you're a living testament of how God will take an ordinary person just simply saying, here I am, Lord. Yes, use me to do extraordinary things. I mean, Absolutely. It, it's just amazing. And, and that's just the God that we serve. Say, Give me what you have it is. so I can do what I need to do through you. And going along with what you're saying, that, that you just are used by as a vessel. Mm -hmm. Because I woke up out of my sleep February 14, 2007, with a poem just swirling around in my head. I wow. mean, I didn't sit around and talk about it or think about writing poetry. I just got up, scribbled it down on a sheet of paper, and after that, the poem was just flowing and flowing mm -hmm. and in a few months I had two or three hundred poems and My you couldn't God. I feel like I couldn't have come up with any of those that mm -hmm. they just were flowing out of me and and that's just how it was just a God thing wow. it really was and that gift that he's given you to be able to write poetry you know has really it is a gift made room and taken you before great men mm -hmm. and I, I want those that are watching right now I want them to hear the poem it's called meet my Mississippi yes. and this is a poem that you've presented to the governor and to the representatives mm -hmm. here in the state of Mississippi yes. to uh, possibly be voted am I correct yes, as January. a poem that represents our state along with our uh, um, flower, the magnolia, and everything else. So I'm just excited for you. <laughs> yes, it will be voted on by the legislature when they convene in January Amen. for it to be possibly the state poem. So I'm just hoping that everything works out and that it will pass through the Senate and the House of Representatives. Amen. It yes. is so in Jesus' name. Let's share with the audience really quickly okay. um, as we take the journey of Meet My Mississippi. Well, the poem is Meet My Mississippi. Faulkner's Sanctuary, Eudora's home state. Elvis's birthplace, the bulk of the trace. Sprawling beaches along the Gulf Coast shore, one blues man's crossroads and inspiration for more. An abundance of history, tradition, and folklore. Warm front porch welcomes with a wide open door. A ride down the mighty river on the American Queen in some of the most beautiful countryside that you've ever seen. She's music and melodies and the mockingbird songs by valor and arm and faith ever strong. She's magnolias blooming around Jackson's Capitol dome and the sweet scent of honeysuckle that forever says home. She's my Mississippi, she's the hospitality state. Go Mississippi, your true state of grace. Oh, wow. God just downloaded that to you. <laughs> That's amazing. It's beautiful. And it gives those that do not know Mississippi a reflection of who we are. Absolutely. It's, it's wonderfully, I mean, written. It's I, beautiful. I love it also that it can be used in the schools to teach children about uh, an easy way to remember things about Mississippi because it yes. includes the state tree, the state flower, by valor in arms is our motto. Yes. And the state song is Go Mississippi. And I was asking some of the students, do you know the, our state song? No. And some of them didn't know the name of our state song. No. And so it's in the poem. Yeah. Now they'll know. It's you, you're educating um, the old and the young. Absolutely. You know, 
in a creative way. Absolutely. Something like a song that you can actually, because it, it has those the rhymes that you can actually remember, remember. it and remember, remember it. about your state, Elvis's yep. birthplace. You Absolutely. Know. Just so many wonderful reflections. Um, Edora Welty's home state, and I love her myself mm -hmm. because I have to say this, uh, that I won the Edora Welty um, scholarship oh, okay. at Mississippi University for Women. So when you Wonderful. read that, I was like, oh, I forgot all about that. You know, but yes. it's a blessing that they get to meet the mm -hmm. Mississippi that we Absolutely. know, that we love so Absolutely. much. And one of the things that I love also about you is on social media, there are times when I'll go down my timeline mm -hmm. and I'll say, oh my God, I didn't know that individual from Mississippi. was from Mississippi. So Absolutely. I want to say thank you for keeping us informed. You. Can you just share with some of our viewers, some of the people that you discovered were from Mississippi that you didn't know or that are doing great things? Well, a lot of people, uh, I, I was, I knew a lot of the people, but a lot of people, I love sharing it because a lot of people didn't know. James Earl Jones, for one person, mm -hmm. is from Mississippi, mm -hmm. and there's been a hoax on social media in the last couple of weeks. That's why I named him first, because they've been saying he's dead, he's dead, mm -hmm. but he's not dead. He's, he, he grew up, he was born in, in um, Mississippi. And, and I love his voice. Oh, my goodness. So distinct. Absolutely. And especially, I think it was Lion King. He was the, the father of, of the. Uh, Lion Mufa M M Mufafa. I right. think that was his name. My daughter <laughs> right. was here. She could say it yes, better. Yes, and he was in Star Wars yes. for all of those, yes. all of those I mean, voices that we remember. And yes. then they talk about our voices and how hick we are and mm -hmm. how this and that. But any kind of person can come out of Mississippi. The thing that I want people to know is just don't stereotype us. Absolutely. You know, don't put us into a box and leave us there. There's much more to it than that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm just tickled because not only that, the town and gown, um, the Golden Triangle area, I think this one was published actually in the Starkville area. Yes. Um, there's mm -hmm. an article in there about you. Just wonderful expressions of who you are, being the Goodwill ambassador, you know, for the state. I'm just excited Thank about you. your future. I'm excited because it's my passion. Yes, Lord. And I <laughs> definitely want those the, the poem that I love so much can we yes. have that one read to those I can. because it's just a wonderful reflection of how I grew up with my grandmother on the front porch you know with the wind blowing and having iced tea okay southern life if you want a glimpse of southern life come close and walk with me I'll tell you all the simple things that you are sure to see you'll see mockingbirds and bumblebees magnolia blossoms and dogwood trees caterpillars on the step wooden porches cleanly swept, watermelons on the vine, strong majestic Georgia pines, rocking chairs and front yard swings, June bugs flying on a string, turnip greens and hot cornbread, coleslaw and barbecue, fried okra, fried corn, fried green tomatoes, fried pies and pickles too. There's ice cold tea that's syrupy sweet and cool green grass beneath your feet catfish nipping in the lake, and fresh young boys on the make. You'll see all these things and much, much more in a way of life that I adore. Oh, wow. Oh, from the first time that I heard you read that, I think tears came down <laughs> because it was just a wonderful reflection of growing up in Mississippi. Some place, sometimes the people say, I ain't never coming back right? here. And I was one of those. <laughs> I was. I went to high school. Yeah. I was like, I can't wait to get out of here because mm -hmm. I feel boxed in. And I asked the high school and junior high kids all the time, how do you feel about Mississippi? Can you, you it's like you don't want, can't wait to leave, right? And every one of them raises mm -hmm. their hands. Mm -hmm. And I said, just wait. Mm -hmm. You're going to appreciate the things yeah. that are here yeah. when you get a little older. Absolutely. You know, just mm -hmm. the hugs, the southern Absolutely. comfort food, the hospitality. Absolutely. Just someone saying, good morning, how are you? Absolutely. When you're in the big city, they look at you like you're crazy Absolutely. and you bump into them. It's like, oh, excuse you. Mm -hmm. You know, right. they're rude. Mm -hmm. So, and they easily offended. So Absolutely. many times, um, just the, the Southern life, as just you said. Just the simple things. Just yes. the simple things that we take for granted if you just live here and don't go away. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank my parents for that because they gave me the opportunity to go away. They wanted me to see something different. So when mm -hmm. I got ready to go to school, they said, you need to go somewhere outside of Mississippi for college. Mm -hmm. And th that was just a gift to me because yeah. it made me appreciate the place so much more. Wow. Mm -hmm. What would you say to a woman right now who's given up on her dreams? Because God has really made your dreams into reality reality, even dreams you didn't even have. Absolutely. He poured them into you. Absolutely. But what would you say to someone who maybe be in their 50s? Because that's the talk show right. that you're, you will be co-hosted yes, with, yes. speaking to women that are in Absolutely. their 50s. So what words of encouragement would you encourage her right now if you would just look into the camera? 
Number one, I always say one of the quotes is you're never too old to dream a new dream and to, to, to make a new goal. And align yourself with God and he will show you the path that you need to take. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Amen. Now, this book was actually published in 2008. Uh -huh. Reflections 2008 and the other one, Magnolia Memories 2012. Wow. Mm -hmm. And this is 2015. And God is continually <laughs> just taking you from level to Absolutely. level. What's next for you? What do you oh, see in the future? The sky's the limit, I guess. Mm -hmm. None of these things were planned. So who knows? I have no idea what's in store for Patricia ne Neely Dorsey. We'll just have to Wow. Wait and see. <laughs> Since the time of waking up, February 14th, and you're writing all of these poems out, have you had any other encounters like that? Um, all of my poems come that way. They're just inspired by seeing something beautiful or mm -hmm. something that touches my heart. Mm -hmm. I never sit down to just sit down to write a poem unless somebody wow. asked or requested. And I'll say, oh my goodness, can I do that? And I'll kind of put, it, put a little skeletal mm -hmm. thing onto mm -hmm. it and I'll just wake up in the middle of the night and I'll have the oh, words wow. and my husband is like, oh my goodness. I'll say, I gotta get up and write a poem. Wow. And it still happens like that. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that it's time to celebrate the South? Out of everything that we've gone through, it is time. You know, history. Why do you believe that it is? Uh, because nobody does that. And we're going through a tumultuous time in our country in yeah. general. Things are in Mississippi. A lot of things are getting topsy-turvy. Yeah. And I want people to know we need to come together, mm -hmm. you know, as a people, as a state, and to realize and recognize the wonderful blessings that we have in this state and not to be divided, you know, yeah. in, in any kind of thing and not let people on the outside eat also tear us apart because we, we're a wonderful state. Yeah, and we're better together. We are. We, we're much better together <laughs> when we work the principles Absolutely. and do what God has called us to do and then just love in spite of and forgive Absolutely. and not be easily offended. Absolutely. And so in saying all of that, because time is quickly approaching, <laughs> I believe, um, I want to ask this question because you referenced your parents mm -hmm. um, quite often mm -hmm. and I can tell that, you know, they did a wonderful job Thank with you, you. Um, rearing, training, just preparing mm -hmm. you for life. Mm -hmm. What was the greatest advice that your father gave you along with your mother? Oh, so much. I can't even think. I think that the greatest gift that they gave me was to be an independent thinker. Mm -hmm. That they gave us the courage to know that whatever you put your mind to, you can do it. Yeah. They never gave me a spirit of being negative about anything. And I think that's part of what I pour into my poems and into my passion. Mm -hmm. It's just like, make it positive. Yeah. Make it the way you want to make it and yeah. you can do it. Wow. Well, again, I want to say thank, thank you. you. We speak God speak blessings thank upon you, you. you know you. I almost got a tie tongue because when I just think about you then and now I say God I thank you for the woman of God for just being able to avail yourself you weren't busy you were able to hear him Absolutely. and to present to us the beautiful books that you've Absolutely. given you know to the world how can we connect with you and how can um, those that are watching actually purchase your books well I'm on Facebook every day so they can find me Patricia Neely Dorsey on Facebook and my website yeah. Patricia Neely Dorsey dot com and you can get my um, books online from Amazon or Barnes and Noble or in Tupelo at the Barnes and Noble or any bookstore will yeah. order them Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, once again, I say thank, <laughs> thank you. you. God bless you. you. Well, I tell you, she's definitely a woman to woman <laughs> diva, one who's determined, intelligent, victorious, and yes, anointed by God. God has already done exceedingly abundantly above all she could ever ask or think in her life. What about you? Again, I declare it's your time. It's your season. But not only that, it is your turn to receive all that God has for you. All you have to do is just simply surrender and say, Lord, here I am. Use me. Take my gifts. Take my talents. I can't do anything with them. I surrender it all to you. Well, of course, I love you all. My time is up. But remember, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Continue to trust him and believe that he's going to do exactly what he says he's going to do. His promises are yea and amen. Do you trust him on today? If you do, just go ahead and praise him. Well, God bless you, and I'll see you next time on The Tammy Show. Be blessed. Thank you for your continual support of WEPH Christian Television Network. For more shows like mine, please follow us on Facebook.